Hi everyone, welcome to our Facebook, Instagram, live at Light and Life. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Um, it's been a pretty wild, crazy week, and I know that there's going to be lots of new things coming out. So what we're trying to do is provide for you a platform to connect with us uh, to feel like we're still church, we're still hanging out together, we still can get to know each other virtually. And so I'm glad that you've joined us tonight. Uh, I wanted to let you know that every Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7.30, you can log on to either Instagram Live or Facebook Live and watch this devotional. There'll be different ones of the pastors who'll be sharing a word of encouragement with you. And you can go to at LLCFLB, that's our social media handle, and click on live. The other thing you can do is on Wednesdays nights at 7 o'clock and on Sunday mornings 9, 10, 30, and noon, we're having our live services. Now, things might change up, so you have to just continue to go to our website, LLCF.org, to get that information. But it looks like at this point, uh, we'll be doing our live services 9 o'clock, 10.30, and noon. And you can access those by going to llcf.org or once again, Facebook or, you, or Instagram, and that will be at llcflb. So join us. Uh, we will try to give you updates as we get them well as well. And just thank you to all of you who have been making... Uh, donations and offerings. It's been really a blessing to see the church continue to support the things that we're doing here and the services that we're providing. Um, we just got a call from a former uh, person who was a member of Light and Life and she owns a few grocery stores and graciously came over today to give us a lot of food to give to other people and then um, my husband's former quarterback high school buddy just texted him and said, hey, I'm here for you. I want to serve you. And he faithful. He was really sweet and gave us a donation so that we could serve our community well during this crisis. So thank you to all of you who are doing that. Um, I also wanted to just update you. I On my way here to the church to do this Facebook Live, I did listen to a small portion of Governor Newsom's uh, declaration that he has asked all of the state of California to uh, stay home and to uh, avoid going out into public. Obviously, he said you can walk your dog and uh, go to the grocery store and med medical things will be available. But he did make that nationwide declaration and I just uh, sorry, not nationwide, <laughs> statewide declaration. So if you are from California, you can go to the website and get that information. It's covid19.ca.gov. And on the California government website, you'll get that information. So it's, it, it's causing us here at Light and Life to have to close our offices immediately. So tomorrow we will not have our offices open and our campus is now officially closed. So we wanted to let you all know that. Well, um, I am excited to be able to share this with you. And what I would like to do uh, is just first open us up in prayer and then uh, share a little bit of God's word with you tonight. So let's pray. Father, we come to you in the midst of a crisis and it's not just a crisis in our church or in our city, in our state. We're actually dealing with a crisis that is global. And Father, we're asking that the peace that passes all understanding, which is ours in Christ Jesus, would fill us to overflowing and fill our hearts and minds and give us clarity of thought. Lord, be with our our government officials who are having to make hard decisions, give them wisdom, be with our first responders as they put themselves in harm's way to help people who are ill and possibly exposing themselves 
to the virus. And Lord, would you be with our healthcare workers who are working so tirelessly to try to um, get people better. Lord, help us to be a people who are wise and careful and, and help the church, Lord. Help us to be the church in this time of need to really make a difference. We ask all of this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, as I was preparing for this time with you tonight, uh, I was just praying, and what came to mind was John 1.14, and that is a really theologically rich verse. Many sermons have been written on it. I am not going to go there tonight. Not that I wouldn't want to. It's just that this is only about 10-15 minutes, and I would not be able to handle that topic. But what I want to do is take a little portion of John 14 and talk about that tonight. And it says in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And what, as we're navigating the new reality of a pandemic, it's causing us to have forced isolation, instability for all of us. Also, there's these crazy emotions that we're having. And I find comfort in this text that says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And I believe can also give you that same kind of comfort. So let's break this apart and see how it can give us comfort from our stress and anxiety. The first part is God is with us because it says the word which refers to Jesus became flesh. See, Jesus coming to earth in a physical body, it meant that he was subjected to the same emotions, situations, discouragements, stress, stressors, even trials as we are. Because he was tempted, he suffered, he knew what it was like to live in this body, in this world. When unexpected things come up, he understood the things that goes with us. And because of that, he can come alongside of us. He empathizes with what we're going through. He understands it when we pray to him. Now, obviously, he lived in a different era. But think about it. Problems are problems and emotions are emotions. And he experienced problems and he felt emotions. He struggled. He experienced deep grief when his friend Lazarus um, died. Scripture tells us he was distressed deeply with grief. Jesus gets it, and he knows your current struggles. He really does understand what you're going through, and he wants to come alongside of you to comfort and strengthen you and to give you hope. And that's why he's given us the Holy Spirit as the comforter. The Holy Spirit is available to each one of us as his followers. But, you know, church, what I find is that we don't ask the Holy Spirit to fill us, to comfort us. But when we ask that, when we ask him to come, I believe that the Holy Spirit prompts people to suddenly just pray for us. I'll get, I'll just get someone's name coming to my heart and mind, and I will pray for them. And then later I reach out and I find out that was exactly what they needed right at that time. Because of the Holy Spirit's prompting, I prayed. Or the Holy Spirit um, can bring light to something you're reading in Scripture that could bring you comfort. It might even be a sudden call from a friend checking up on you just at that right time. When we struggle with anxiety and fear, we can cast that fear, that care, that concern on Him. Because First Peter 5, 7 tells us He cares for us. And I love the, in the Amplified Bible, it says, God is moved by our concerns and cares for us with his deepest affection. And he watches carefully over us. Church, Jesus is with us. He really does care. You are not alone. So I, I'm, I'm really encouraging you. Don't isolate in this time of need. Don't. Pretend that this is going to go away. This is a real thing. So don't be afraid to reach out. Ask us to pray for you. In the 
in the comment section there on Facebook Live. You can start giving us your prayer requests. You can go to LLCF.org and you can tell us what your prayer requests are. We're mobilizing prayer warriors to be praying for you to help you in this time of need. Now, I'm going to switch this up on you a little teeny bit, and I'm going to ask, who have you reached out to today? It's interesting, a couple years ago, Psychology Today wrote an article about some research that they did on people struggling with self-worth issues and uh, depression. And with the research that they did, what they found was people who um, compassionately served others even in the midst of their own struggles and depression, it helped them feel better, not only about themselves, but it helped their depression and it helped them in their interpersonal relationships with other people. So church, I'm going to encourage you tonight, reach out to others who may need an encouraging word today. Who can you send a text to and ask, how can I pray for you? I did that a lot today. I reached out to a whole bunch of people via text and email. And I just said, how can I pray for you? How are you doing in the midst of all of this? And it was really an honor for them to share with me their prayer requests and to share with me a little bit of what's going on in their lives. Don't be afraid to build networks like that and to, and to build a tribe. We've got so many great tools online now. We've got Zoom and Google Hangouts and Skypes and all kinds of ways, FaceTime hangouts that we can begin to uh, network. Stop isolating. Reach out. It actually will help you feel better as well. Now the next part of that phrase um, that where it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Dwelling among us, the Greek here, it's really cool, refers, refers to the tabernacle in the Old Testament. And that was where the presence of God resided on earth. It was in the tabernacle tabernacle. So when Jesus took on flesh and came to earth, the word tabernacle, so to speak, became God's presence. So now the tabernacle is gone because the world has become the place where Jesus's presence resides. The presence of God resides here. And I loved Eugene Peterson's uh, translation of John 1.14 where he says, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. See, the presence of God has moved into the neighborhood and is available to us in human form because we as the the follow as followers of Christ have been given the spirit of God. And now we get to go take this presence of God into our neighborhoods. And it's really beautiful to think that when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was infused with that spirit. So I become that tabernacle. And we're told that in Scripture. I am that tabernacle where Jesus resides. And I have the privilege of taking, the, taking God to my neighbors. Little Christians means little Christ. And as little Christ, we get to go into the neighborhood. So now let's bring this to reality during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. How are you moving into the neighborhood? Many people right now are quarantined due to health restrictions or they're over 65 and they've been asked to stay home. Now all of us have been asked to stay home if we can. Uh, many people have lost jobs. They're suddenly found with a few dollars in the bank account and not a whole lot of food in their cupboards. There's great need. So if we want to take Jesus into our neighborhoods, we've got to be willing to reach out with the love and hope and compassion of Christ. So how do we do that? Even if you don't know your neighbor's names, perhaps you can still send an encouragement note to them. Love Long Beach has these great little forms you can fill out that says, Hi, I'm your neighbor. This is my name. And you tell a little bit about yourself and then you ask them what they need and you put that in their mailboxes. And you find you can network with your neighbors that way. Um, maybe you've got kids at home. Get your kids to draw pictures and write little prayers out and begin to deliver those to your neighbors. Or maybe you're handy and you like to 
or you're a baker and you like to cook, how about baking some cookies and taking love gifts over to your neighbors just to say, hey, I love you and I'm here for you. What about just running a simple errand like going and getting somebody some toilet paper? If you can find it, that's probably bigger than just a little errand, I think. Um, I know that uh, I found out today when I reached out in my text messages that uh, one person, both of their parents have lost their jobs now and the food is running low. And so talked about getting groceries to them. Um, I think about even a time in my life when Larry and I were uh, in the early years of our marriage, we, our church had fallen apart, we lost our jobs, we had no income, and Lindsay was all, was very little. And it was getting scary because the cupboards were bare, we didn't have a whole lot of money. But people knew our situation, and one morning we woke up and opened the front door, and there was this, these bags of groceries that someone anonymously left for us because they knew of our need. And it it gave me hope to press on and keep going. So church, let's, let's put our love into action. Let's begin to say, I have faith and I have faith with deeds. So in closing, what I want to do is I want to read James 2 as a reminder to help us how we can begin to move into the neighborhood with faith and good deeds to bring Jesus to those most in need. So in James 2, this is how we can put our faith into action. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters? If you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and say, Goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. And then verse 26 says in James 2, faith is dead without good works. Church, there's no greater time for Christians to demonstrate the love of Christ. How can we bring the beauty of Jesus into every nook and cranny of society? How can we flow into our neighborhoods? As followers of Christ, I'm going to ask, how are you moving into your neighborhood with the presence of God? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that Jesus was such a great model for us to follow, how he went into every part of society and shared love and hope and healing. God, I pray that in the midst of this pandemic, we, the church, would rise up and be the hands and feet of Jesus to those who need it so desperately. Help us, Lord, to be an encouragement to all of those that are living near us Help us, Lord, make a difference for the kingdom. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church, I love you. Don't forget, live service Sunday, 9, 10, 30, and noon at this point. We'll keep you updated on our Facebook page and Instagram at LLCF. Oh, sorry, LLCFLB or our website, LLCF.org. All right, blessings. I love you. Be blessed. Have a great rest of the week.